Structs and classes can have their own variables and constants, and these are called properties. These let you attach values to your types to represent them uniquely. But because types can also have methods, you can have them behave according to their own data. Let's take a look at an example now. Here's our person struct again, with clothes and shoes properties, plus a describe method, and then tailor and other are both instances of that struct. When I ask for tailor.describe, it will print out tailor's clothing, which will be t-shirts and sneakers. When I ask for other.describe, it will print out the other struct's properties, which will be short skirts and high heels. So as you can see, when you use a property inside a method, it will automatically use the value that belongs to the same object. Swift lets you add code to be run when a property is about to be changed or has already been changed. This is frequently a good way to have a UI update when a value changes, for example. There are two kinds of property observer, will set and did set, and they're called before or after a property is changed. In will set, Swift provides your code with a special value called new value that contains what the new property value is going to be. And in did set, you're given old value to represent the previous value. Here we have a simplified version of our person struct, plus an instance of it called tailor with clothes t-shirts, and a new function called update UI. It takes a message string and just prints it out. Very simple function. We're going to attach two property observers to the clothes property of this person struct. After it, we'll have an open brace, then write will set, open brace, update UI with the message I'm changing from clothes to new value then end the will set, and also a did set. Update UI, message, I just changed from screen interpolation old value to clothes. Boom. And now when we change Taylor's clothes, if we say she wears uh, dot short skirts like that, when we change her in the playground, she'll print out those messages. I'm changing from t-shirts to short skirts, and I just changed from t-shirts to short skirts. It's possible to make properties that are actually code behind the scenes. We already used the uppercase method of strings, for example. But there's also a property called capitalized that gets calculated as needed, rather than every string always storing a capitalized version of itself. To make a computed property, place an open brace after your property, then use either get or set to make an action happen at the appropriate time. For example, if you have a struct person, inside there have an age int, oops, age int. If you want to add an age in dog years property that automatically returns a person's age multiplied by seven, we'll do this. Our age in dog years is an int, open brace, get, open brace, return, age times seven, and then close uh, these braces. We can now say var fan equals a person age 25, print fan dot age in dog years. Computed properties are increasingly common in Apple's code, but less common in user code. If you intend to use these things only ever for reading data, you can just remove the word get entirely and just have return age time seven. 